It's April. Spring is in full swing. The sun is higher in the sky. The temperatures are just starting to warm. The cardinals are singing and hyacinths are in bloom. These flowers, they grow very low to the ground, about six to nine inches, but they have these beautiful, vibrant, bell-shaped blooms. They're most noted for their distinct intoxicating fragrance, which has been featured often in perfume throughout the many decades. I'm going to be featuring five of these fragrances in this video, but to kick things off, I want to talk about the flower itself. Uh, hyacinth, uh, the Latin name is Hyacinthus orientalis. It grows from bulbs. And to give you a little bit of background on this flower, the name originates from Greek mythology. And in one story, a young boy named Hyacinth was killed when a discus hit him in the head during a game. And a hyacinth sprang from the cut in his head as he lay in the arms of the god Apollo, who was wailing in grief. Hyacinth has come to symbolize dying and the resurrecting beauty of nature, spring and rebirth. The bulbs of the hyacinth are poisonous. They contain oxalic acid, so do not eat. <laughs> However, grape hyacinth, which is not really often featured in fragrance and isn't a true hyacinth, is edible. So be sure to make that distinction. Um, even when people plant hyacinth, they may need to wear gloves because it can cause mild skin irritation just handling the bulbs. There's no essential oil or solvent extracted absolute that can be obtained from hyacinth, although there have been attempts to do on fleurage. Uh, with varying levels of success, most of them being limited insofar as they're being able to impart their aroma and fragrance. The fragrance of these flowers themselves are quite, it's quite complex. There's this synergy between the greenness, the crispness, crispness, brightness of the flowers, and there's this sort of oily, dark undertone. And it's fascinating how you have these polarities in this one flower. Um, aspects of it are jasmine-like, narcissus-like. There's this indolic freshness. There's even some medicinal and spicy um, aspects to hyacinth. Um, so it could be considered somewhat white floral, somewhat green floral. There's also an animalic undercurrent and even something that kind of reminds me of like bitter chocolate, like a dark chocolate that gives it this depth. And it it really contrasts with that freshness. Um, there's this earthiness as well, um, which we can associate it with the fact that it is a bulbous frag uh, a bulbous flower um, that grows from the earth itself. Um, and in perfumery, there are many different things that are used to create a hyacinth accord. IFF has something called hyacinth body. This is a base. I have this base and it is pretty convincing of the smell of your typical garden hyacinth uh, with this leafy green kind of floral character. There's also other things that are used in per perfumery like PADMA, which is the acronym for phenylacetaldehyde dimethyl acetyl. Um, there's also galbanum, a natural that is used, or there can be synthetics um, that are galbanum related um, in building that hyacinth accord. Paracresyl phenyl acetate, paracresyl acetate, which also happen to be used in Narcissus, um, and also sterile alcohol and sterile acetate. Um, so once again, we are not seeing an essential oil or um, an absolute or any natural material really being used specifically from the plant itself, but rather a combination of naturals and synthetics to build this hyacinth note or accord and a fragrance. Um, hyacinths have been featured in perfumes um, since the early 20, 20th century. Um, things really started picking up with it being noticed in fragrances um, in the 60s with these aldehydic sheepras, green sheepras into the 70s, and so forth. So we'll get things started by talking about 
uh, the five fragrances that I would like to share with all of you. And it will begin with what I would consider to be a hyacinth solifloor. It is named Bluebell because hyacinths are often called bluebells, especially um, in Europe, in the UK. Not to be confused with the Virginia bluebell, which is a different flower that has a light scent to it, but is not related to hyacinth. So this is a bluebell from um, Penhaligans. This was launched in 1978. It was composed by Michael Pickthall. And this to me is one of the most realistic hyacinths, which also means it may be a bit challenging to those who are not terribly familiar with uh, the scent of the flowers themselves, which to me would be shocking if, if one weren't, but it, there are plenty out there. Um, because there are many, like I was saying earlier, there's many aspects to the hyacinth flower that are, are that are not conventionally pretty, and they're all right here. So you have those medicinal elements, those spicy elements, very green biting elements. Um, it's just unapolog un unapologetically stemmy, sharp. Um, it opens the senses. Um, it's there's this dewy floral splendor as it develops and the spicy cinnamic undertone to it. Uh, I find it to be the ultimate hyacinth solo floor. Um, and, you know, usually hyacinth is, is sort of tamed a bit as a supporting player um, or even just sort of like a walk on appearance in certain fl uh, floral fragrances or green fragrances. But here it is the star player and and it is hyacinth world and every other note is just living in it um it steals the show for better or worse but for that i particularly adore it i i truly believe some folks may not have had the pleasure of experiencing hyacinths and their fragrance up close and personal or maybe they would be put off by them <laughs> if they smelled them and therefore be put off by bluebell uh which is all fine and good uh, stop sniffing hyacinth centric scents then, <laughs> because maybe it's the kind of uh, floral note that doesn't suit your taste. Um, it may not necessarily be the fragrance, it may just be you. Uh, in all seriousness, though, if it were just Princess Diana and me who enjoyed Bluebell, then I'd just be fine with that. <laughs> Happy spring with Penhaligon's Bluebell Eau de Toilette, which I think is still in production. There was a point where there were some rumors that it had been uh, taken out of production, but I think with some Penalicans, they go in and out of production. They have some sort of system for that um, in some cases. The next one here actually is discontinued, sadly, and it is one of my favorites from Paco Rabanne. This was released in 1979, a Chypre floral fragrance known as Metal, and the nose behind this is Robert Gannon. So in this, we have hyacinth, among other green notes, aldehydes, leafy notes, basil, lily of the valley, iris, jasmine, rose, ylang ylang, tuberose, very floral in the heart. But what really strikes me, especially in the beginning, is that it is a pure sonorous hyacinth. So here in the Northern, Northern Hemisphere, in case you weren't aware, that's where I am. Um, hyacinths are currently in bloom. They come in white, purple, indigo, pink, even a cream color. They all have a hypnotic, spiced, damp greenness, uh, sort of like a Cupid's arrow through the heart, dizzying and rapturous. It begins with the uh, hyacinths all aglow, penetrating the senses and awakening the soul. Delirious aldehydes, showy bell-shaped petals, a kaleidoscope of colors, with the negative space colored in green like newborn foliage. These first 20 minutes of metal are breathtaking, and then it takes a turn for the better. Because there's a cornucopia of fecund flowers, lilies of the valley, all manners of white flowers, rose, the whole shebang. And it renders... I guess, um, here we go, a metallic quality. Metal only really gets its smell from the reaction to our perspiration and skin oils, which makes me think of the perspiration of all these blooms, their condensation, distilled here so that it smells larger than life itself. The smell of metal is a matter of perception, 
green gone full throttle, gilded lilies, silver roses, stamens made of copper filament. Metal is radiance, right down to its last gasp of moss and vetiver. It's a hope springs eternal fragrance with a cool collected optimism. It's a compact composition with a sonority seldom felt in contemporary fragrances. It takes the right temperament to fully appreciate it, but if it's there, it's heaven on earth. Um, it has been discontinued for a number of years now. Um, this is the only version that I'm aware of. I'm sure if you found an intact intact vintage even older than this um you may be pleased if this is your idea of beautiful fragrance newer bottles i'm not uh, aware with either uh, but in this version pre-2000s i think short ingredients list don't have the box handy but trust me this version is is just gorgeous so there you have it eau de toilette uh the eau de toilette of metal um from paco raban Here, the third one is a scent by Issey Miyake, which was uh, launched in 2009. The nose behind this fragrance is Daphne Bougie. Uh, with an aquiance translucency, a scent is a modern interpretation of the hyacinth galbanum citrus floral, shimmering and crisp, like the sun shining on a vernal pool. Bitter stems, white and purple blooms, the early verdant lawns of a warm day in April after a soft rain. That's the feeling that I get here. It is lucid, simple, somewhat soapy and sheer, a bit more floral than I'd expected, which is a, in fact a plus. I discern a wonderfully sheer jasmine note in the heart, and I discern hints of crushed tomato leaves and basil as well. It also sort of reminds me somewhat of Calyx, Prescriptive's Calyx, later produced by Clinique, without the overripe cantaloupe and fruit salad. I would wear a few sprays while visiting Garden in the Woods here in, um, near uh, me in Framingham, Massachusetts, while admiring the spring ephemerals, the development that eventually leads to a woody dry down, and that would complement the surroundings. Uh, this is unfortunately no longer in production either, but as far as I last check, it's checked, it's still available at not too steep of a cost, for now at least. Next in line is the Exuberant Cabotine, which was launched in 1990. The nose behind this one is Jean-Claude Delvy. Uh, the top notes are coriander, orange blossom, blackcurrant, cassia plum, tangerine and peach, with the middle notes of tuberose. Our uh, dear hyacinth, carnation, ginger, jasmine, ylang ylang, freesia, iris, rose, heliotrope, and violet, with the base notes being vetiver, civet, blackcurrant, musk, sandalwood, cedar, amber, tonka bean, and vanilla. This is cheap and cheerful, and it has this handsome bottle <laughs> um, with a broccoli hat. And uh, it's a succulent green floral, uh, radiant with these effervescent aldehydes and a panoply of florals, including hyacinth. Uh, I also pick up a good dose of both coriander and ginger lily. Um, as opposed to ginger, um, I think in the notes pyramid, it, it shows ginger, I believe. Um, and what I mentioned in the notes breakdown earlier was ginger. But I, I identify it as more ginger lily. Um, through its absolute. I've, I'm familiar with its absolute through studying perfume making. It, it, I, I believe they probably reproduced its essence quite remarkably here because this is a very affordable scent. I don't think that there's a ton of naturals here. Um, but ginger li lily, to give you some background, um, Hedicium coronarium, it grows naturally in the Himalaya regions of India and Nepal. And it has these hints of honey and melon. Uh, there's somewhat like an over-ripened uh, seductive uh, to this and it's in contrast with the aliphatic aldehydes and green notes um, and you know there's just something so unique about this one I, I think that it was a bold release for its time uh, for all of its spring effulgence the florals are extended into the base by this civet accord uh, that is ever so subtle 
but present enough so that cabotene is not resolutely clean. It's almost imparting sort of like this buttery impression to the dry down. Um, cabotene, uh, cabotene does retain a translucent atmospheric character though um, as it dries on your skin. Oh man, it smells so good right out of the atomizer. For something so affordable and in its current formulation, I'm impressed with its quality. Uh, there was definitely care and attention to preserve the integrity of this 33-year-old release. Uh, and Grey um, Paris releases are now in the care of Lalique Beauty. Take that as we will. Um, I think that this one has held up very well in modern formulations. And uh, if it sounds good to you, you're not going to have to spend very much for it. Lastly, out of the five that I'll be discussing is this one from 1979. This is Jean-Louis Um This is the EDT version, which I am partial to because of its um, bright, resonant opening. The Sheeper Floral was actually composed by the nose uh, Joseph Ramis. And this is an underrated classic. Um, it's, it's sharp, bitter ultra verdant yet it's vivacious and a bit more warm and inviting than others in its genre it invites you to wander in its bed of hyacinths grasses weeds wildflowers and moss laden trees likewise there is this sunniness and that sonority to its opening uh, with only a few billowy clouds obscuring the rays filtering the scenery, and then suds lathering the greenery, a little soapiness. The chorus of florals lend a chord to journey from dissonance to consonance. That beauty of resolve, the back and forth, teetering between uncertain and melancholic to tender and reassuring. Nothing is sweet in its heart, at least in the usual sense. Though it's surely a sweetheart of a fragrance. There's no vanilla, no tonka to pacify, just the rawness of flowers, leaves, and the vegetation and earthy soil underneath. It's ever so slightly powdery in the dry down. All the woods circle in and there is a certain lull, a languor, uh, lingering hues of violet and orris. There is even the tiniest pinch of civet skank close to the skin, reminding us that there is an animal to go along with the vegetable and mineral. I avoid seeing anything like it is a must-have, but for green enthusiasts, this is if this is not a must-have, it is definitely at least a must-try. It's spectacular, and uh, rumor has it, this is a somewhat older bottle, but rumor has it, um, with this still being in production, it still smells sensational um, from those who are a fan of Jean-Louis Chalet. Um, so yeah, it's still pretty available and pretty affordable. And it's one of my favorite bottles. I mean, just look at this. It's, it's, it's quite classy <laughs> looking. So I wanted to show some honorable mentions. Uh, Guy Le Roche Fiji, Chanel Cristal, uh, Jean Patou Vacances, uh, Guillain Chamad, Madame Rochat, and Estee Lauder Private Collection. All of these have a prominent hyacinth note um, and are gorgeous fragrances in their own right. I have a question for folks out there. There is one um, hyacinth-centered fragrance that I have yet to try. And this may come uh, as a surprise to those who are aware that I'm a huge Serge Luton's fan. But I've actually never tried Bade de Suis. Anybody out there tried it? or And if so, would they recommend it? Um, let me know in the comments. Um, so, yeah. That's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy this video, please subscribe, click the like button, hit the bell button to receive further notifications. And until next time, happy spring. Take care.